Today's video is sponsored by Sheet Music Plus, a great website with sheet music from any genre you could possibly want. Click the link down in the description below and enter in the word love at checkout and you get $15 off your order. How about that? In the meantime, stick around. We got a great video coming for you. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today is the second in a series of five videos designed to introduce brand new musicians to things they should probably know and look for when buying their first musical instrument. To see the first video, which covers buying your first guitar, click here. This video is about buying your first bass guitar, which is definitely a little different compared to a regular guitar. Whether hanging in the pocket, making your foot tap, or making your spine tingle while you bang your head, the bass is an important part of a group's rhythm, section, and sound, along with the drums. Hope you've been working out your back, because it's about to get heavy. If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Before we go further, I just want to say that a lot of this information is courtesy of schoolofrock.com. I wasn't joking about things getting heavy. Bass guitars are heavier than a regular guitar, and uh, playing them requires different technique. Let's go over some of what to look for in buying a new bass. What size is it? The scale or string length will determine the size of the bass. Basses come in long scale and short scale. It's important to match the size of the bass to the size of the bassist. Does the bass stay in tune? Tuning issues are rare with basses as compared to guitars. However, the, the larger strings, they tend to be more stable, but they're more expensive. Even so, it's a good idea to play for a bit and check your bass guitar tuning to see whether it's stable. Being in tune will make learning easier and more fun. How's the action? The action refers to how high the strings are in relation to the fretboard of the neck. The action makes playing easier or more difficult depending on how high it is. And if it's not set just right, you can get an unpleasant buzzing sound. Are the electronics in good condition? For electric basses, make sure that you test the bass with an amplifier and that the volume and tone controls work to adjust the sound. Listen for any crackling sounds, as that may indicate some faulty electronics or wiring, or just something loose inside. Are the frets level? Check to see whether the frets are level and that the notes sound good all the way up and down the neck. Uneven frets can cause bad notes on different parts of the neck. Run your hand up and down the neck. Frets should feel even and smooth. How thick is the neck width? As you look at basses, check the width of the guitar neck. Some bass guitars have wider necks than others, and a younger player could benefit from having a narrower neck that is slightly less difficult to navigate. Some of the advantages of an electric bass guitar are availability in short scales, making them accessible for younger players, frequent use uh, in most popular styles of music, and almost exclusively in rock and pop, a smaller size making them easier to play than larger acoustic models, uh, ability to produce a wide variety of tones from smooth jazz to distorted heavy metal, amplification allowing the sound to be more easily heard and shaped by effects pedals. Disadvantages of an electric bass guitar include additional accessories are needed to get amplified, which can drive up the cost. Uh, they're unsuitable to some styles like folk and world music, Advantages of an acoustic bass guitar include a woody and warm sound that's great for playing folk music and unplugged jam sessions with other acoustic instruments. No need for amps. Very portable. Disadvantages of an acoustic bass guitar are additional equipment, which is often required to be installed so the bass can plug in and be amplified. Limited range of sounds and tones compared to a solid body electric bass. Uh, the difficulty level is definitely ramped up for beginners because more effort is required to press the strings down with the fretting hand. 
Now we're going to talk about fretless bass guitars and upright basses. These two types of basses uh, shouldn't be considered for beginners. Fretless electric basses, which have the metal frets that intonate the neck removed, are much more difficult to learn to play on because they require the player to have an already refined ear. Upright basses, which are a type of acoustic fretless bass, typically are used in jazz and bluegrass music, and they're also more difficult to learn on due to their size. Playing the bass in a group is a big responsibility. You're expected to work hand in hand with the drummer to keep everyone in time and on track. At the same time, a good bass line can drive the beat and keep things moving along. Explore different genres and playing styles and pretty soon you'll be indispensable to your group and the local music scene. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you found it somewhat informational. There are links down below to where you can find good deals on uh, bases and also there's links down below for things like room6.shop, my online store, um, my Patreon page, and also where you can buy my music, which has basses in it. <laughs> in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I'd appreciate it. Click down here and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, practice, 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 and we'll see you next time on Room 6.